Though there were many things to love about the return of Lorelai, Rory, and the rest of the Star's Hollow gang, there were also a lot of things we could have done without. I thought it was Spanish, but then I had the gardener try to tell her to come in early one day, and he came back and told me she wasn't speaking Spanish, and it took me a while to understand what he was saying because I need the pool man to translate for the gardener. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we hated about Gilmore Girls A Year In The Life. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be sharing our least favorite moments and storylines from the 2016 Gilmore Girls miniseries. Fair warning, there will be spoilers. Are you prepared to have a really unattractive child that would not look good on camera? Number 10. Loose Ends Lorelai, why are we here? Though the ending of A Year in the Life had a lot of satisfying moments, Fans were left with a whole lot of burning questions that went unanswered. Where do Luke and Lorelai stand on having a baby? Will Paris and Doyle get back together? Who is the father of Rory's baby? And who wrote that mean letter to Emily? Whoa, what? What letter? Since there were no episodes scheduled to be produced as of early 2017, it looks like we'd be left wondering for a bit. But considering that so many of the major storylines were left unfinished, Fans could only hope this meant that more Gilmore content will be on its way. What the hell? What the hell? Number 9. Not Enough Lane Hurry! Hey, I didn't know you were coming in today! Hey. Though some supporting characters like Paris, Kirk, and Michelle were more fleshed out in the revival, Rory's best friend Lane seems to have gotten the short end of the stick. How's things in the Korea? Oh, and Guam and Whoa. Bulgaria. Great. Her screen time is minimal and her story development is pretty disappointing. Ten years later and Lane is working at Kim's Antiques. Thanks for coming, we appreciate your business. Lane's storyline in the original series was all about getting away from Mrs. Kim's expectations. Fans had higher hopes for their favorite small town rock star hopeful. And even if Hep Alien wasn't destined to make it big, it would have been nice to see Lane doing something other than following in her mother's footsteps. Also, we would have loved to see more of Suki than the one scene we were given. Suki? No. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Wow, that was pornographic. Number 8. Rory's Entitlement and Lack of Professionalism So, what are you up to now? Oh, I, uh, well, I'm here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we know it's a tough job market out there for young people, especially in the world of journalism. But Rory seems to be waiting for everything to fall right into her lap while not doing a great job of actually being a journalist. What brings you here today? Well, I love pastry. <laughs> And I'm a big yelper, so I try to get to things before anyone else. She falls asleep while interviewing a source, sleeps with another source, and shows up to a job interview completely unprepared. If I take a chance on Rory Gilmore, what am I getting? What? Though it's hard to think of Rory as anything but perfect, fans had a hard time sympathizing with her in the revival episodes. The Rory Gilmore we know and love can write a compelling piece about the school parking lot being paved. So this behavior seemed more than a little out of character. I slept with a Wookiee. Go again. Number 7. The Insensitive Jokes Belly alert. Holy moly. Come on, guys. There are so many things to laugh about that don't involve poking fun at minorities or people who are overweight. There are a few times in the revival that culturally sensitive fans were unsure whether they were supposed to be laughing at the characters or with them. Lots of returning favorites today. Why, there's old Butterbutt. And our good friend, Back Fat Pat. Lorelai and Rory spend a whole scene body-shaming people at the star's hollow pool. Taylor tries to borrow gaze from a neighboring town, and Emily hires a maid whose language is incomprehensible to her. This may fit with the personalities of the characters we know and love, but jokes about people's broken English or different body types feel so 2007. What language is that? I do not know. Number 6. Lorelai does some really un lorelai things. I should get to bed. I'm hitting the trail really early in the morning. We know, we know. People change. But Lorelai may have changed a little too much. It's been 10 years, but it still seems unlikely that Lorelai would actually choose to do any sort of outdoor activity, let alone a serious endeavor like hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. Okay, can I get the attention of the wild ladies? <clears throat> Movie or book? It actually doesn't matter. It matters to us. Considering that, to our knowledge, Lorelai has never even so much as spent the night camping, it seems pretty unrealistic that this is how she would choose to find herself. I don't usually do any of this. I mean, who does, right? Unless you're on the lam, which I am not. <laughs> also, Lorelai has always been supportive of everything that Rory has wanted to do. 
so it also seems out of character that she would object to her writing a memoir about their lives. Mom, come on. I have to do this. You don't have my permission. Number five, there was no intro song. For my rock and roll, the because I love you, you idiot. I smell snow. Though we totally had chills with the way the revival started and loved hearing some of our favorite quotes from the show, we kept waiting for the familiar notes of the intro song, Where You Lead, but it never came. Where you lead, I will follow anywhere that you tell me. There's something comforting about the tune that fans have heard so many times, so it was slightly jarring to be without it. Luckily, Die Hard fans got a nice surprise when Carol King, who wrote Where You Lead, made a cameo appearance as an enthusiastic Stars Hollow resident and even gets an opportunity to perform one of her other well-known songs. I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky tumbling down, tumbling down. Oh, and the song does ultimately appear in the last episode's credits. Number four, Stars Hollow the Musical. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy Stars Hollow the Musical. <laughs> Though there may have been some funny parts, Stars Hollow the Musical ultimately took up way too much time that could have been spent on pretty much anything else, i.e. maybe more of a storyline for Lane? We get it, this musical is supposed to be bad, but in that case, showing snippets from a few scenes would have sufficed. Fans had to sit through an entire 10 minutes of this monstrosity, and it stopped being funny after about minute one. This redwood tree, it soars so high, it touches God in heaven. We'll hack it into a dining room set that'll easily seat a lemon. If this was all just an excuse to let Broadway mainstays Sutton Foster and Christian Borle shine, then it definitely did the trick. But a bit this long did not belong in the revival. What's there not to love about the town of Star? Number three, Luke and Lorelai's communication. Hey, uh, how was therapy today? Same old, same old. My mother did most of the talking. Ten years later, why are these two still lying to each other? There's literally no reason for Lorelai to lie about going to therapy without her mother, and we can't imagine why Luke wouldn't tell Lorelai about going to visit potential franchise locations. We gotta get started. We got a lot of ground to cover. Started on... We're seeing properties. What properties? Three gems, an in-betweener, and a dog with a price I like. Their relationship hasn't progressed very much since we last saw them at the end of Season 7. And in the end, they don't get any closure on their lack of communication. Surrogates will... Carry the baby. Our baby. Yes, they'll carry our baby. It's all well and good to end on the happy note of the two getting married, but we've got to be pretty concerned that their problems will follow them even after they say I do. I'm on my knees in fascination. Number 2. Rory's Relationship Morality my love life is a disaster. Did you not break up with Pete yet? Back in the original series, Rory slept with her married ex-boyfriend Dean, and the show treated it with exactly the gravitas it needed. Lorelai tells her that she's made a terrible decision, and she has to deal with the consequences of breaking up a marriage. He's Dean, my Dean. He's not your Dean. He's Lindsay's Dean. You're the other woman. In the revival, however, Rory cheats on her boyfriend with Logan, who is also cheating on his fiancée and the two experience exactly zero fallout. Logan Huntsberger? I thought he was engaged to that French heiress. We thought she'd learned her lesson, but her being the other woman is not even treated as a particularly serious issue. Also, Rory dates a guy for two years who she couldn't care less about, but somehow keeps forgetting to break up with, bringing him along for yet another year. You have got to cut that poor boy loose. No, I keep meaning to, and I just keep forgetting. It's so, so sad. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's just we never had any closure. Life's not really about closure, is it? Oh my god. What is it? Oh my god. Tristan. Your guy. Paul. Paul, yes, Paul. Paul's not here. Paul's here. Who's Paul? Paul, my, Paul, my boyfriend? Oh crap, Paul is here. Number one, the final four words. Mom. Yeah. I'm pregnant. There was so much hype around these final four words that they would inevitably be divisive. Rory dropping the totally unexpected news that she's pregnant, and then the screen going black felt kind of emotionally manipulative. 
and made fans wonder if this was just a setup for more episodes to come. Such a long time getting here. Sometimes it's just a journey, you know? Considering this was supposed to be the final episode of the series, it seems a little strange to end on such a cliffhanger. Viewers aren't 100% sure who the father of Rory's baby is, though most signs point to Logan. There just wasn't quite enough buildup to make this revelation feel natural. What's going on in there? I don't remember it all. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.